I'm going to be talking about storing the signal data with Pod5. I'm going to briefly go over some terminology that I'm going to be using in this talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about FAST5, our previous way of storing signal data, and then dig into Pod5. So let's lay some groundwork. Some of you may know this stuff already, but I think it's good to make sure we're all on the same page. Firstly, what do we mean by signal? Well, this is the measurement of the actual electrical current across nanopore as a time-ordered series of samples. This signal is broken down into reads. There's some nuance over the term read, but for our purposes, we'll think of it as the signal for a single strand of DNA or RNA. Base calling is the act of turning signal into sequences, DNA or RNA sequences in particular. This is typically done by some sort of machine learning model, like a recurrent neural network. And those models need training with lots of signal data. But why do we want to store this signal data? After all, Minnow is perfectly capable of base calling your data and spitting out FASTQ files with the sequences in straight away. Well, perhaps you've got an HPC system you want to do your analysis on. Or maybe you want to base call your data multiple times, now or in the future. You might be experimenting with different base call parameters. Or you might want to be saving your data for when tomorrow's new base caller comes out. And of course, training all those base callers, require, base call models, requires lots of signal data. So currently, we store signal data in FAST5. This is based on HDF5 which is something of an industry standard in scientific computing. This has a few advantages. We can tap into the extensive HDF5 ecosystem. You can open our FAST5 files in HDF view or dig into them with H5Py and NumPy, which I've done many times. HDF5 is also capable of storing lots of different types of data in the same file, which is convenient for users. If we had to store, say, signal data in one file and read metadata in another file, then simple things like renaming the files would suddenly become a lot more complicated. HDF5 is not without its drawbacks, though. For one, it can be really slow. This is mostly due to the library that we use to read and write HDF5. You can only use this from one thread, even if you're dealing with completely distinct files. And this extends to compressing and decompressing the data even. This can seriously limit throughput. The, uh, um, and there are workarounds uh, and uh, lots of tuning you can do. But ultimately, getting good performance out of HDF5, at least for our use cases, is extremely difficult. Uh, at least, and may require re-architecting your entire software around the limitations of HDF5. And even once you've done that, the chances are you're not getting the maximum performance out of your system that it's capable of. The other big thing is that it's hard to recover partially written files, uh, which is a problem if, uh, when unexpected things happen. So why are we making a new file format? Well, unsurprisingly, given what I've just been saying about HDF5, our main motivations are performance and reliability. When it comes to performance, we're interested in three main scenarios. Minnow needs to be able to write out the data efficiently, even in the face of reads of unknown length coming from thousands of nanopores simultaneously. This is really critical for us, as we know that simply writing out this data to disk is a performance bottleneck. Base callers like Guppy or Dorado need to be able to read these files quickly, whether that's consuming the entire file at once or picking out one or two reads. And systems for training base calling models also need to be able to process these files quickly, and they can have quite different access patterns to base callers. When it comes to reliability, we're mostly talking about being able to recover data from partially written files, whether due to power loss or software crashes, or 
simply running out of disk space. We clearly hope none of these things ever happen. Minnow tries very hard to stop gracefully before you run out of disk space. And obviously, we put a lot of work into not crashing. But sometimes bad things happen. And we want to recover as much data leading up to that event as possible. So what is pod 5? It's basically three Apache arrow tables bundled up into a simple container format. We'll get back to this layout later. But we've got the metadata for the reads in the file. We've got run level information about the minnow runs that the reads came from. And we've got the signal data, of course. Why did we choose Apache Arrow? Well, to quote from its website, Arrow is a language-independent column memory format organized for efficient analytic operations on modern hardware, such as CPUs and GPUs. It's also capable of zero copy reads, which is to say, it's fast. And it has a columnar layout, which makes a lot of operations on the data very efficient. It also has a large existing ecosystem. You can load up Arrow data into Pandas or even MATLAB. And with some care in how the data is written out, it's, it's straightforward to recover most of a partially written file. OK, so Arrow is great. But why do we feel the need to write a container format for it? Well, we wanted to retain that simplicity from FAST5 of just having everything contained in a single file. This makes oh, one of our major use cases is offloading these files to an HPC system or to long-term storage to later be fed through a base caller. And that would be more complicated if we had, say, three files in a folder that you had to keep together and with the right names. The format is really just the tables in Apache Arrow's Feather 2 storage format concatenated together with some extra bits to say where to find the tables in the file. Let's dig into those Arrow tables a bit more. Well, the core table here is the reads table, which contains the metadata for the reads. We split out the run level information into its own table. It's a lot of duplicated information in the common case, and that has implications for both storage and processing requirements. So we've just done some database normalization. The signal data is in its own table, mostly for writing efficiency. This allows Minnow to start writing out the signal data for a read before it's even finished going through the for. For long reads, this allows Minnow to avoid having to write out the data to disk multiple times, which relieves the IO pressure on the system. And as I've alluded to, this is a key benefit of this format because it allows us to make some real performance gains in Minnow. We've, the benchmarking we've done shows reading from pod 5 to be an order of magnitude or more faster than doing the same from fast 5. To give an illustration of the sort of speeds we're talking about, Dorado is able to base call the data from a single pod 5 file at over a billion samples per second. That's over 1.7 times the maximum theoretical output of a P48, given current sequencing parameters. And although I think it's also worth highlighting that although we didn't set out to do this, we also have file size gains with pod 5. Uh, as in smaller files. Uh, so this depends on the, read, the length of the reads you've got in the file. But for long reads, we're talking about savings of around 4%. And if you've got files with lots of short reads, they can be considerably better. So I'm sure you're wondering, where can you get hold of pod 5? Well, we have a GitHub re repository. You can find specifications in the docs directory. We've got a reference implementation C++ library with a C interface wrapping it for use from other languages. There's a Python library, of course. Uh, we've got a library and tools in that, and wheels for all the common platforms. We have a converter tool available online, pod5.nanoportech.com. And we've just released the 0.1 version. Uh, 
we changed uh, some changes to the file format uh, since the release we did in September, but the tools and library still support the old format, so you don't need to uh, reconvert your data. Uh, and we've combined the tools and library to one package. You can just pip install pod5 and get going. We're not planning to make any more changes. Backwards incompatible changes to the file format, so you can start using pod5 with confidence. And of course, the next Mino release during the next few weeks will have it integrated. So you can reap the performance benefits without having to do any manual conversion steps. So with that, thank you.